untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic games video. Today we're taking a look at a Mardu artifact aggro deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck is made possible thanks to the recent addition of Thraben Inspector in the format, which was added in the latest historic anthology expansion. A 1 mana 1 2 that when it enters the battlefield lets us investigate, which means we get to make a clue artifact token that we can sacrifice for 2 mana to draw a card. So Thraben Inspector does a lot of useful things for the deck. It provides us with an artifact early on to enable Toolcraft Exemplar to become a 3-2, as well as letting our Spire of Industry tap for one man of any color. It also gives us a creature which can help protect our Planeswalkers, since we don't mind chum blocking with it. And by chum blocking with it, it ends up in the graveyard where it can fuel our Scrap Heap Scrounger, which needs to exile a creature from our graveyard to return from the graveyard to the battlefield. And then it also gives us a way to enable Revolt for Fatal Push by sacrificing that clue token. And we can easily sacrifice a clue using Chandra's mana ability. And then we also want to be emptying our hand quickly since we're playing with Beaumont Courier, which needs to discard our hand to give us access to a fresh set of cards. So getting that clue token afterwards to then draw a card once we get that fresh set of cards is also quite synergistic. So it just goes to show how many cool synergies we have with Thraben Inspector and how important it is to the deck. Then taking a big picture perspective at the deck here, we see a nice variety of threats, which makes this aggro deck quite resilient to removal and sweeper effects, since we have planeswalkers that can win the game by themselves, as well as vehicles which can survive sweepers, and creatures that can come back from the graveyard to the battlefield. So our deck is quite resilient and quite powerful against control strategies, which is one of its biggest strengths. Then taking a look at the rest of our 1-drops, we already mentioned Toolcraft Exemplar, a 1-mana one 1-1 one one saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, if we control an artifact it gets plus 2 plus 1 until end of turn, and if we control 3 or more artifacts it also gains first strike until end of turn. Then we've got 2 copies of Fatal Push as a cheap removal spell, and the full playset of Thoughtseize giving us a bit of hand disruption, great against any combo or control decks. And then the full play set of Beaumont Courier, a 1-1 one, one with haste, and when it attacks we exile the top card of our library face down. And then for a single red mana, by discarding our hand and sacrificing Beaumont Courier, we get to put all those exiled cards into our hand. So Beaumont Courier can provide a nice bit of card advantage, besides being a cheap artifact to enable our various synergies. Then at 2 mana we've got Scrap Heap Scrounger, a 2 mana 3-2 that cannot block, but can also return from the graveyard by exiling a creature from our graveyard and paying 1 on a black. And then Heart of Kieran, also very important in the deck, a 2-mana legendary artifact vehicle. It's a 4-4 with flying and vigilance, so also gives us a bit of evasion. And the crew cost is 3, so we need to tap a total of 3 or more power to crew the Heart of Kieran to turn it into a creature. But we can also remove a loyalty counter from a planeswalker we control to crew Heart of Kieran rather than pay its crew cost. So very synergistic with our two planeswalkers. And one of them is a Gideon Blackblade, a 3-mana 4-loyalty planeswalker. And as long as it's our turn, Gideon is a 4-4 human soldier creature with indestructible that's still a planeswalker and we prevent all damage that would be dealt to Gideon during our turn and then the plus one ability says up to one author target creature we control against our choice of vigilance, lifelink or indestructible until end of turn so it can also give us a bit of life gain against author aggressive decks and then the minus six which we can activate pretty quickly lets us exile target to no land permanent so access to even more interaction then we also have the full set of bone crusher giant we're often going to use the two mana adventure stomp first dealing 2 damage to any target and then giving us access to a 4-3 creature afterwards. Adventures also quite synergistic with Beaumont Couriers since they can wait for us in exile without having to sit in our hand. And then finally two copies of Chandra Torch of Defiance which has 4 different abilities. The first one exiles the top card of our library and we can cast that card if we don't. Chandra deals 2 damage to each opponent so that's our source of card advantage. Then can also plus 1 to add a double red to our mana pool and then the minus 3 gives us access to a bit of removal dealing 4 damage to target creature and then the minus seven ultimate is also game winning giving us an emblem saying whenever we cast a spell the emblem deals five damage to any target and then going over the mana base, we've got access to all eight fast lands here, which is also one of the strengths of the deck. We've got four copies of Concealed Courtyard and four copies of Inspiring Vantage. Then we've got ten shock lands with four copies of Godless Shrine, four copies of Blood Crypt and two copies of Sacred Foundry, four copies of the Red-White Pathway, and then two copies of Spire of Industry to round out the mana base. No basic lands, so we're a bit soft to cards like Field of Ruin, but those decks are typically going to be worried about dealing with our threats instead of activating their lands. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does.
All right, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one, Toolcraft Exemplar. Turn two, double Beaumont Courier. Typically want to lead with Exemplar. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one, Mountain. And then I'm probably going to play the Spire of Industry next turn. So we don't have to take any damage from our Shocklands just yet. Second mountain into Robber of the Rich. All right, Mr. Opponent also on an aggro deck. Well, at least we'll get to empty our hand quickly here. And Gideon could also be great. So for now, we're just racing. Our deck is not very good at playing defense. And then next turn, Gideon could give the Exemplar lifelink as well. Robber hits for two, doesn't exile anything, but enables a light of the stage. And now they can stomp our toolcraft exemplar if they want. Opponent passes, picked up a scrap heap scrounger. All right, I guess I prefer scrounger plus inspector over Gideon for now. So let us attack. Don't think the first strike is gonna be relevant, otherwise we could play scrap heap first. But I expect him to Stomp here. All right, tool craft down. And as much as it pains me here, literally, I think I still want to take two to play out the Thraben Inspector. And then I guess we'll play the White Source. So next turn I don't have to take damage to play Gideon. because I do want to empty my hands, both for the Robber of the Rich and for the Beaumont Couriers. And then next turn, we can maybe play Gideon plus Sacrifice Courier, or just play this tapped. And then Gideon can give Scrap Heap lifelink. Right, it's gonna be a Chandra Torch of Defiance. Which, you know, could go after a scrap heap, but then we can still finish off Chandra next turn. So it's gonna add double red. And a second robber. So they might start playing defense now. Thoughtseize, not that useful, but we can just discard it with a Beaumont Courier if we want. So I think this turn I'm gonna Gideon life link up the scrap heap which goes after Chandra alongside probably just all my other creatures and then they'll block both couriers or they can block the scrap heap and a courier and will sacrifice the one they block. Is that reasonable? Gideon will be at five, so doesn't die to the two robbers attacking. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Could also go with indestructible on scrap heap. I think lifelink's better. And then all at Chandra. Right, they do block a scrap heap, and then we'll sacrifice this courier. Heart of Kiron definitely going to be useful. Although now they could potentially draw a card with a robber. Robber goes after Gideon and finds a Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, that was one of their better hits. Since they can use the adventure and the creature half. It's going to be a Soul Scar Mage, which can potentially shrink down Heart of Kiron, so that's quite effective. Chandra adds mana. And then 
It's gonna be a rampaging Frostodon preventing a lifelink. So. And we draw another heart. Well, gotta go after Chandra here. And then I can play hearts and play Scrap Heap, which can crew the heart on defense as well. And doesn't matter too much what Gideon does here. I can give it indestructible, but it goes away in a turn. So we're just gonna jump with the Soulscar Mage. At least Heart of Kiran doesn't deal any damage with Ferocidon. If I bring back Scrap Heap, that also works. And then I can kind of crew the hearts at instant speed, if you will. But I kind of want to empty my hand for Robber of the Rich, too. So I think just playing a Scrap Heap is going to be better for me here. So it feels like we're slightly behind, but this Heart of Kiran could do a lot of work, especially combined with Gideon. Could also technically crew heart with Gideon's loyalty. Frostodon goes for Gideon, Robber goes face. Finds another Bone Crusher Giant. That's unfortunate. Well, I guess we'll crew using Scrap Heap. And then I can either double block Frostodon, or I can just block the robber and lose my heart to the stomp they just drew. But of course, double blocking would also lose hearts. We've got backup Gideons and backup hearts. I think I'm blocking the Frostodon. And they have to put heart first, so Thraben Inspector survives. And at least now I can gain life again with Gideon. Chandra pluses, finds a land which deals two to us, and they can play Bone Crusher. Nope, they had a shock for Scrap Heap instead. No, Thought Seize doesn't so. do anything. So, yeah, we can still take out Chandra here, play Heart of Kiron, which can play defense. And then I think we'll give this lifelink. Share in my light. I am out of here. It's going to be a Beaumont Courier off the top. Both at Gideon. And we want to crew Heart of Kiron. And block this Robber of the Rich. Which finds a Toolcraft Exemplar. There's also an argument for blocking Courier. But if they refill their hand, I've got a Thought Seize, which I can put to use. <laughs> I've fought worse. All right, some more Scrap Heaps. So I can bring back a Scrap Heap. Crew Heart of Kiron using one of them. And then give that Heart of Kiron lifelink, or I can give Scrap Heap indestructible. We're at 11. Yeah, I guess I don't mind the lifelink here. Your light will cleave the darkness. 
And then playing another scrap heap will give me Heart of Kiran on defense as well. Point falls all the way to two. So yeah, despite hitting multiple good cards of Robber of the Rich, we're still looking pretty good. Controlling a lot of creatures that cannot block against the Red Aggressive deck, but yeah, Heart of Kiran and Gideon definitely pulling their weight onto the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Jagatha of the Wellspring deck, so it could be a Jun Sacrifice deck. We've got a fine opening hand here. Turn 1 Exemplar into a turn 2 Scrap Heap, or we can Inspector plus Fatal Push if needed. Overgrown Tomb into Cauldron Familiar. Heart of Kiran, also nice draw, which I guess is better than Scrap Heap since they can easily block my ground creatures with the familiar, but at least Heart of Kiran I can crew next turn to fly over. Opponent takes three. Heart of Kiran's also safe from Claim the Firstborn, which is their best tool against creature decks. As you see, Toolcraft already getting sacrificed to Witch's Oven after hitting us for three to add insult to injury. Alright, so Scrap Heap Cruise Hearts, and then probably just play the Thraven Inspector. And then a Clue Token plus Fatal Push can maybe take out a Mayhem Devil. Gonna be a Midnight Reaper instead. So we could still take that out. Sacrifice Clue Fatal Push. I guess I want to keep my white mana untapped, but we can draw first and then decide, I guess, if we need to shock ourselves or not. Um, Bone Crusher, not the best solution to Midnight Reaper since if they sack it to the oven, it would fizzle the creature half. So I think I'm just gonna push it. And then the Thraben Inspector can also attack. Alright, got our opponent down to 7, can maybe stomp their face as well. So we're getting close, although the Cauldron Familiar is definitely annoying. It's gonna be a Priest of Forgotten Gods, which we could maybe stomp and a Thought Seize. Now if I Thought Seize, I cannot stomp and play Bone Crusher, which we might want to do. Again, we're gonna lose the creature half if we stomp and they just sacrifice priest to the witch's oven. So, bit of a conundrum here. I think I'm just gonna end up thought seizing, crewing heart with scrap heap, and then if they sacrifice familiar end of turn, I'll stomp the priest. So let's seize first, in case they have a fatal push. Alright, just all lanes. We'll crew. Sank with the hearts. Play tap land and pass. And now I think we'll storm the priests. Could keep the storm to go face. But my opponent can always sacrifice food tokens to gain life, so I don't think we necessarily 
kill them next turn. And Priest can be very dangerous if we let them untap with it. Alright, another claim the Firstborn off the top. Hits us for a 3 down to 4. It's probably fine. I could jump, put an extra creature in graveyard to get back Scrap Heap. Yeah, maybe I should. And then next turn bring back Scrap Heap to Crew Heart and then play Bone Crusher on defense. Fatal Push could also come in handy. But our opponent concedes. All right, sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Second Heart of Kiram may not be super useful, but it's one of our better cards. We'll enable Toolcraft nicely. Could also Thought Seize plus Beaumont Courier here. And given that the only way to crew heart is by tapping Exemplar, we're not gaining a whole lot of damage in that exchange. So I don't mind Thought Seize plus Courier here. Let's see what our opponent's working with. A Tybalt Trickery deck, so we want to take their zero drop so they cannot trickery me on turn two. They can still do it on turn three with Shepherd. Hmm, this is annoying since they have multiple ways to trickery. I guess I take the stone coil here. And then hopefully draw another Thought Seize for the Shepherd next turn. And there's always a chance they brick with Trickery. They do have a third land with Symbiosis, so they're definitely gonna pull it off on turn three. So is my best bet to sacrifice Beaumont Courier in the hopes of hitting another Thought Seize? It might be. Because we have enough pressure as is. And preventing the combo is kind of my only concern here. So I'll take two. Attack for four. And we'll sacrifice. Alright, we did it. Take Shepherd and hope they don't have another one. Huh, opponent's gonna use Trickery the way it was intended. Yeah, I guess that works too. And now it's Shepherd into Trickery. Uh, let's hope they brick. They did not. Genesis Ultimatum. Puts an Ulamog into play. Yeah, that's probably game over here. Can sack my clue, but I'm not sure what we're hoping to draw into. Shepherd being uncounterable also resolves through the trickery, so that's nice. And a third trickery is gonna hit another Ulamog. This time it's cast, so they get to exile two of my permanents. And mill 20 cards here. So what's our hope here? Chandra doesn't quite do it. I can kill Stone Coil Serpents, Chump Ulamog. Still gonna mill me for 20. Two cards left, don't really see an out. Burn. 
more force to chump. So Shepard definitely could have attacked if he wanted to. And our final card yep. is a land. Alright, we got them to seven. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Yurion deck, so probably something more controlling. Yeah, this sounds fine. Fatal Push probably not going to be at its best. But Inspector into Scrap Heap will get the party started. Yeah, one gonna Thought Seize. Might take away. Thraven Inspector goes for Bone Crusher. So, opponent on a black control deck. Make that Sultai, so it could be the Sultai Ultimatum ramp deck. So eventually finding a Thought Seize could also be key. If they take Scrap Heap, we can just bring it back. End of turn. Opponent gonna start ramping. Would love to find one of our planeswalkers here. Alright, there's Gideon. So Gideon gives Scrounge your lifelink. Now our opponents is playing Binding the Old Gods, I believe, so that's a nice answer for Gideon, potentially. Otherwise, they're gonna struggle. Opponent already down to 11 from the double Thoughtseize. Gonna play a tapped Restoration. I don't think so. And we draw our own Thoughtseize, so... Start there. Yurion, Plain White Celebration, Ultimatum. I think we just take Yurion and try and close out the game before they can cast their ultimatum. I believe in you, friend. Could have maybe sacked a clue in case we hit a Beaumont Courier. I'll shock myself since we have a lot of life to spare. And then just sack this end of turn. In case we need to enable Revolt for Fatal Push somehow. Although main phasing this is also reasonable since we have a lot of one drops we could hit. Right, extinction events. So now I could consider fatal pushing my own scrap heap as well. But opponent seems dead on board regardless. So we'll let that happen and then Gideon can just attack for the win. Alright, sweet, so. Nice game here against Sultai Ultimatum. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Missing red mana for now. But don't need it right away. It's going to be a while before we sacrifice Beaumont Courier. Which will be our one drop of choice. Facing Mountain. Pun probably has a shock here. And then turn two, I think I'm playing Heart of Kiron, since on turn three we can crew it with a uh, Scrap Heap Scrounger. Ooh, Gideon, even better. And then we can crew Heart of Kiron by just tapping Gideon next turn and give it lifelink. A light with stage hard casts? That's never pretty. Play a red source. Gideon Jura, at your service. And hit for four. So your opponent's gonna have a hard time beating this Gideon combo, although I guess they do have Ferocidon to prevent life gain. And they can cast both cards before they go away. I don't 
Bone Crusher Giant could stomp on the Soul Scar, which could also shrink down Heart of Kiron, so that's not a bad idea. So we can play Scrap Heap to Crew Hearts. And then attack and stomp the Soul Scar Mage. Doesn't matter too much what we name. Your light will cleave the darkness. And I should probably just stomp the Soul Scar Mage now. Alright. So they can hit Gideon for three here. So they might have a burn spell to finish him off. Stomps my scrap heap, although we can bring him back from the graveyard pretty easily. Also an interesting trick if our opponents wanted to stomp Gideon to finish him off. We could crew Heart of Kiron just to fizzle the adventure half. Since we can crew repeatedly just to remove all the loyalty on Gideon, Bone Crusher doesn't have illegal targets. But in this case it doesn't matter. So Gideon down, but we still have a Heart of Kiron we can count on. So we'll play Bone Crusher. Which can crew. And then it's probably fine to take two and end of turn return scrap heap. Has read the fervent. That's a scary card, but doesn't fly. So they can hit me for eight. And a light of the stage is not going to do it here. But they got pretty close. Just had a very powerful start with a life-linking Heart of Kiron on turn 3. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Exemplar into Heart into Gideon, hopefully. Maybe Thoughtseize sprinkled in. Opponent with a turn one Knight of the Evil Legion, which I could fatal push. I'm probably gonna wanna Thought Seize within the next turn or two. And I only have a single black. I think I'm still playing the toolcraft here. And then next turn I can Thraben plus push or Thraben plus Thought Seize to enable toolcraft. If the opponent's playing a Death Shadow deck, I might want to hold Fatal Push for Death Shadow, or we might take it away with the Thought Seize. Alright, opponent's got their own Thought Seize, which might take my copy. So we'll make the opponent spend mana casting the discard spells and losing life while we try and develop our board. Takes a Fatal Push. Alright, so next turn I'm probably forced to Thought Seize before they can deploy the rest of their hand. And then Inspector can power up Exemplar, unless we want to avoid lowering the opponent's life total. Alright, they have another Thought Seize, which at this point I imagine takes my other Thought Seize. We've got multiple artifacts to power up Toolcraft Exemplar. Actually takes the Heart of Kiron. I guess they're struggling to deal with evasive creatures. Knight picks up a counter from losing for life here. So gotta take a look. And double Scourge of the Skyclaves, that makes sense. Play Thraben Inspector. And I think we're still attacking. And then I could Shum Block to keep my life total a little higher. Or we could wait until we get Gideon in play. Opponent's also playing blue. Or they might just want to play an extra Shockland. So if I take two, this grows up to a 5-5, five five, which can then block Exemplar. So I think we chump. Thoughtseize. Probably not worth it here. 
and just play Scrank Peep and attack. Or attack first. So our opponent's down to six, but the Scourge is going to grow very quickly, so if we don't find a Fatal Push soon, we're in trouble. Knight going to hang back on defense. I can play Gideon at least. Make one of my creatures indestructible, so I can still hit them for three. The other creature dies, which is probably going to be the Scrap Heap. Then what happens to Gideon? Probably dies on the way back. Could also go for Lifelink. Although they can still block with the Knight. Interesting spot. I think putting them to three is still worth it. And then we'll make double red in case of Chandra. So this is indestructible. I will lend you my strength. And they can block and pump. And then they can kill Gideon, but maybe a removal spell can kill them on the way back. I am not quite indestructible. Godless Shrine tapped. Blood Crypt off the top. Opponent could have something like Ranger of Eos in hand, and they didn't want to go to one. Although, they probably would have played it and gotten Death Shadow here at this point. I think I'm just gonna play a tap land and then end of turn bring back Scrap Heap. Opponent on taps. Feed the swarm, I'm gonna put the opponent to two. So now Bone Crusher Giant could kill them. Just the Scourge attacking. So I'm still gonna get back Scrap Heap end of turn. I guess the drawback is if I draw Chandra, Chandra could still kill them. And Dread Wonder. All right, so we got to think here. If I bring back Scrap Heap, then Fatal Push, which I have one copy of, would give me the win by killing Knight. If I crack the clue next turn and draw Bone Crusher, I win regardless. If I crack the clue and my next draw step is Chandra, then I won't have the time to cast it and the opponent kills me on the way back. So we have two Chandras in the deck. We have one Fatal Push in the deck. I'm trying to think if there's another reason to bring back Scrap Heap here, but I think Burn Spells is how we need to do it. Beaumont Courier doesn't quite do it. Yeah, I think we crack the clue now, just in case I draw Chandra in two draw steps. Found a Heart of Kiran. I guess that keeps me alive, as it can chump Scourge. Opponent sends in the team, but I guess they can still pump the knights, which would still deal 8 total. Alright, GG's, close one. One burn spell away from the win. 
we had six out, so close game for sure. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and yeah, this hand seems fine. We've got Heart of Kiron with both Scrap Heap and Chandra to Cruits. Facing a turn one Wind Robber. Ooh, Toolcraft, excellent pickup too. So, yeah, we'll play Sacred Foundry. And then turn three, I can maybe play this Blood Crypt tapped. I think I still go with hearts, because if it gets countered, we still have a backup, so I don't mind too much. Alright, and now I can attack, since even if they have the 1-3 flash, we can still attack past it. And there's a Soaring Thought Thief. Could have also opted to, you know, crew Heart of Kiron defensively. But next turn I can maybe both attack and block with it. So already four cars in Graveyard. And a Blood Chief's Thirst taking care of the Toolcraft Exemplar. So now we're just playing Scrap Heap. And seeing if this resolves. It does. Do I want to attack with Heart of Kiron? Or do we try and block with it? I think we try and block with it this time. Try and play a slightly more controlling game with Chandra coming up next turn. Right, another Thought Thief. Hopefully no instant speed removal for hearts. They are attacking. So we can block a Thought Thief, hopefully. Take six down to nine. Might see a Sorcery Speed Removal spell finish off heart. Nope, just a scavenger. Alright. More Heart of Kirons. So, I kind of want to trade Heart of Kiron for scavenger. Although I might have to use Chandra instead. And then kill the scavenger. And we'll pass. Play with fire, you're gonna get burned. They do have a castle locked way in and we don't, so they might be advantaged here in the long game. I'll happily trade hard for their two creatures here. And Beaumont Courier to draw. So kick things off by plussing for cards, since we have all the mana we need. Oh, it's Fatal Push. Sure. It's kind of interesting since they might have just traded here. But I'll still make use of it as opposed to dealing two damage. And our opponent explodes. Alright. Well, they saw full grip, but they didn't know we had two more copies of Heart of Kiron. But we would have been able to attack with Courier, play a land, and then potentially discard Heart of Kiron to draw more cards with Courier instead. So we should have been in reasonable shape. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Turn one Exemplar, turn two Heart of Kiron, crew it with a Scrap Heap. Opponent with a Bojuka Bog on turn one, so maybe a black controlling deck. We'll see. It's gonna be a Faceless Haven. So they're probably running some Snow Basics and Thoughtseize. 
I imagine takes Heart of Kiron. Alright, and draw another one. That's how you do it. Hit for three. And next turn we can hit for seven. Serpon may be holding up Fatal Push for Heart of Kiron. Don't have to play into it. Yeah, it's a little bit obvious here. Might be Heartless Act as well, I suppose. So I think I just attack, play Scrap Heap, and protect Heart of Kiron since it's pretty valuable if the opponent ends up casting a Sweeper to clear the board of creatures to have something left over. Opponent forced to Heartless Act. Toolcraft Exemplar instead. And we still have a Heart of Kiron. And Knight of the Evil Legion, so they do have some creatures in there too. Into a Zealots. Alright. So I can play Second Scrounger, Crew Heart, hit for 7. And Stomp is also excellent here. So if they double block, we can stomp. Although I'm probably going to end up killing Knight of the Evil Legion regardless. Yeah, I'll wait until the opponent's turn. If they thought sees me again, I can stomp in response. If they want to hit me for one, that's fine. If they pump, we can once again stomp in response. The one damage shouldn't matter. Opponent passes, so they're once again holding up removal, but I can just stomp their face now too. And then Bonecrusher Giant can crew hearts, they kill the hearts, still take 6 down to 2. I guess I could get punished by a sweeper then, so maybe I still keep the hearts uncrewed and hit for 6. It's going to be a Murder Strider, so our opponent takes two extra damage. So we could have killed him had we gone for the Heart of Kiron play, but I think we'll be just fine. And then play Bone Crusher, Shock and Sacred Foundry, so end of turn I can return Scrap Heap. So even a Sweeper doesn't do it here. and play as Murder Strider. So worst case scenario is they have a fatal push for Heart of Kiron, but our opponent explodes, so I guess they must not have had it. Alrighty, so we got to play a nice variety of games with our Mardu aggro deck here, and overall the deck feels like it relies pretty heavily on Heart of Kiron to get across a finish line. There's a lot of matchups where the ground creatures aren't going to get the job done, so unless you have a very aggressive start backed up by Planeswalkers, it's usually Heart of Kiron carrying you across the finish line. So it may not even be the best Heart of Kiron deck in Historic, since you could potentially build Mono Black Aggro with Heart of Kiron, and then you have Castle Lochthwain as a nice late game plan that this deck doesn't have access to. But I do think that the strengths of this deck are probably going to show more in best of three once you get access to a sideboard, because we do have three different colors to choose from. So cards like Showdown of the Skulls could be a nice late game card against the more grindy matchups. We can always bring in more hand disruption, more removal, like maybe unlicensed disintegration against larger creatures, as we also get the three additional damage. Can maybe bring in Graveyard Hate like Graph Digger's Cage, which can also hit Collected Company, and at the same time it's a cheap artifact to enable our various synergies. So there's definitely a lot of sideboard options available for this deck. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.